Hello and welcome to this pit stop for the Voyages of Marco Polo, designed by Daniela Tashini and Simone Luciani, published by Hansim Gluck and Z-Man Games. In the Voyages of Marco Polo, players are going to compete over five rounds in order to fulfill contracts by collecting goods and traveling across the map from Venezia through to Beijing in order to score the most points. At the beginning of each round, each player is going to roll their player dice and they're going to come up with figures and then on their turn, they're going to place one or more of these dice onto the board in order to activate actions. The actions at the bottom of the board are always available. You can get extra ones later on in the game. First of all, you can come down here and you can take contracts. Now, the number on the die you place tells you how far along here you can go to choose. You can take one or two. And when you take them, you place them on your board. You can never hold two at once. And this will not refill in a round unless it completely empties. And these contracts tell you what goods it are, is that you're trying to collect and what the reward you'll get is for completing that contract. Now, you're going to want to get these goods. You can do that a little bit by coming and get in the favor of the calm where you must place a higher dice than the one that's been placed previously. Or you can come to the market. And when you come to the market, you can choose one, two or three dice. And when you go there, the value of the lowest die that you've placed is going to tell you what column you can come to on the row. So in this case, for a red, their value was three. They can come to here and they may take two camels or two gold. You can always choose lower. You can go on top of another player's die that's already been placed. In this case, if we place our four, we can go on top of yellow. It doesn't matter what their number was. It's just our number that counts. We must pay money back to the bank for the four pips. We're going to pay four money in. And then we get to also carry out this action. In this case, we can take four camels if we wish to. Now, there are extra things you can do with these camels. There are extra actions you can take each turn. There's a space here to take money, but once one die is there, you have to pay to go on top of it. You can always take as an extra action. It's not your player action to give up a die in order to get three coins. You can also spend camels to manipulate your die. For one camel, you can re-roll any of them. For two, you can move a number up and down one. Or for three, you can take one of these black dice and roll it. And for each space on the board, you can never go back there again with your own player color, but these act as a neutral color, so I can go back on top of here if I wish to, to take more contracts later on in the round. I can also travel around the board. When I come here, I go on top and again pay my money. And then I see how many spaces I wish to move up to the value of my die, I'm gonna to have to hand in money again. So if I want to move three spaces, I'd have to pay 12 gold into the bank. Now, movement, it depends upon where you are on the board. Let's say that red wanted to move across here, they'd have to pay the money for going there, the money for the move, and a 15 money toll for going across the sea there, an expensive sea charter. When you arrive in a small town, you put down your trading post, you must, and then you are gonna get an immediate bonus for whatever is on that small town, in this case, three victory points. And you're gonna get those as an income at the beginning of every round. So Redis sets up for three points, three gold and a camel every round. When you move to big towns, it's slightly different. The first person to get there is gonna get a one-off bonus. In this case, I get another black die. Also, you have to place a trading post. But what that does, rather than giving you an income of something, it gives access to more places you can place your die. In this case, if I went there, I'd get three gold for placing that six. The difference in these spots to those spots is you must have a trading post there to be able to activate it, and no one can go on top of you once you're there. It can only be claimed once per round. Now, players are trying to race across from Venice to get all the way to Beijing, which will give them a few points at the end of the game and also give them a chance to hand in goods in order to score points. The other way of main way of scoring points is contracts. The last free action you can do before or after your main action on the turn is to hand in goods, in this case, two camels, three spice and two gold. And you're gonna get whatever benefit is on your contract. Here I'm gonna get money and points. I can get moves, you can get extra dice, you can get all sorts of different things to bonus, extra goods to help you fulfill more contracts. And you can spend that. And at the end of the game, whoever has fulfilled the most contracts is also gonna get a seven point bonus. The extra spaces in these large cities are randomized from a deck, so every game is gonna be different. But in order to help you maximize what's going on here and make a plan, each player also gets an individual player power for each game, and they're varied, but some examples are the Kublai Khan, who begins in Beijing already on the 10 points rather than over in Venice. Rashid Ad-Din Sinan, who gets to set the value of his dice at the beginning of each round. 
Niccolo and Marco Polo, they have two figures and they can go in two different directions around the board and they have an income of a camel. The Burka Khan never pays to go on top of other players' dice. Mercator X Tabriz gets goods every time someone goes to the market. Or Matteo Polo, who gets an extra white die to roll every turn, and he gets an income off a random contract, which will allow him to score more points. The end of five rounds, we're going to see who scored the most, and they will be the most successful merchant in the voyages of Marco Polo. This has been a Game Pit Pit Stop. For more videos like this, please check out the Game Pit channel on YouTube. And for more in-depth coverage of gaming, please find the Game Pit Podcast. Thanks.